हरि ओ हरि ओ हरि ओ हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स everybody is essential and potentially essentially and potentially divine everybody we just have for gotten this and then we identify if what is happening in this world in this role that we are playing and we have the tendency to put layer and layer and layer and layer on top of that in some people that essential divinity shines through easily and in some people the layers are so thick it's not so obvious but it's still there <laughs> everybody is essentially and potentially divine we don't have to attain that we don't have to reach that it's not an achievement it's our birthright it's our true nature when we start to become more conscious invariably we'll have to have a good look at ourselves and then we become more aware how we are functioning and in that becoming more aware we are learning those how those mechanisms are covering up that purity that innocent purity that is there at the base and in spite of not having the need to search for something that is far away but it is here it is now we don't get around that job of polishing <laughs> polishing of the stuff that has accumulated when we become more conscious then we see certain traits are there we can let them there that they don't bother us they don't cover up that inherent innocent beauty whereas there are other traits that are simply obscuring that and for that we somehow have to take the trouble to look at them and learn to get rid of them <laughs> recently i was talking about this and said that we can then intend when we see such a thing intend that we detach from it still it may go on it depends how strong a tendency is it may go on for a little time maybe for a longer time but if we are alert every time it takes over again that then sooner or later we become aware aha there it got me again no need of regretting what has happened simply learn the lesson and see okay there is more work to do and intend again that this is dissolving and then somebody told me but why all this intending we just have to go with the flow of li life life will teach us our lessons 
And it's true, life is teaching our lessons. But we have to be open to that in order to learn them. Otherwise, we keep on repeating the same stories over and over and over. The person says, but life is doing everything. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> life is very patient. And actually, the, our capacity in a human form with a human intelligence, we can intend, we can make those sankalpas. That's also part of life. That's also part of nature. There's absolutely not a contradiction that we are in the flow of life and also using our capacities. If we just say, okay, why should I do anything? Life will take care of everything. Then we may go on for a long time, repeating the same stuff over and over. And those tendencies that invariably lead us into pain, that create suffering for ourselves, for others around, we are well advised to take care of those and learn in one way or another to get rid of it. There is no contradiction in doing so and being in the current of life. Of course, life is doing that. That's what we are here for. It's a continuous possibility. It's a continuous confrontation. We don't have to be full of tensions about it. That was most probably the misconception of that person, that making sankalpas intending is somehow contradictory to the flow of life because it causes tensions. We don't have to create tensions, but be clear, aha, here I'm seeing clearly this kind of reaction, this kind of behavior, this kind of talk, this way of talking to people is again unnecessarily creating tensions. <clears throat> if one is happy with the how the life goes, a little joyousness, a little suffering, we can go on and say, okay, that's how it is. What I'm talking about is for people who are fed up with suffering, who come to the conclusion, hey, no, I need not suffer. It's not something natural. Of course, it is natural. Of course, it is invariably like this, that some situations are pleasant, some situations are unpleasant. That we like certain things and we don't like certain things. Nothing wrong with that. But we start to suffer because our disharmonious way of dealing with things that we don't like that mental block, that mental resistance, not accepting the situation as it is, and then always trying to somehow bend the circumstances with a lot of force to the way that we, that we like them. <laughs> there we are creating tension. If we flow with life from moment to moment, accepting what comes and then give our positive creative input in the current, then we don't create tensions, we don't create suffering. Then even in unpleasant situations, we don't suffer. That doesn't mean we have to artificially learn to like them. 
No, if we don't like them, we don't like them. So what they come, we deal with them, we let them go. And if we are decided, I don't want to create suffering anymore. I don't need it. It's unnatural. Then we can very well use that capacity to put our intention in the current. It's part of life. It's part of the human existence. It's part of the nature. <laughs> There is absolutely no contradiction. All these philosophies, they say that we have absolutely no say in it. They are missing definitely one aspect. That creative beauty that is there, that is given along in this game. Consciousness manifest has its own creativity that's part of the divine will it's all within the divine will whatever happens within the creation is within the divine will yet part of that divine will is that consciousness manifest has its own creativity that we have the possibility to use those capacities that we have in a human form and one definitely is to consciously make some kalpas to consciously put that intent in the current i would recommend we do that just to remove things that creating troubles if there is a desire for something, that's also an intent. That's okay if you are not getting attached to it, if you are not getting obsessive. But then there are certain schools who very much work with that, that uh, you can manifest in your life whatever you want. And it's true. If we put enough in intention in the current, then we may manifest all kinds of things. But then, the danger is we get so absorbed in that that we forget the main purpose for being here to bring the attention back and become aware of our inherent divinity but by all means use that possibility to intend, to put an intention in the current. When we see, oh, there is just an old habit, an old vasana, a, a pattern, a tendency that is there, that has power because I have been repeating it all the time. And all the time it's creating pain, it's creating suffering. To intend that away is absolutely nothing wrong, but actually we are asked to do so. Even if somebody says, I'm learning my lessons from life, from the current of life, if one really learns the lessons automatically when something goes wrong because of my behavior, there is that whether one is aware of it or not, there is that intention. Right, I could handle this in a much more creative and harmonious way, then it would not create all this pain, these tensions. Let's use all our abilities to remove those layers that we have created unconsciously. Let's consciously contribute to peel them off that that inherent divinity shines through more and more.
All right, I stop talking all by myself. And I'm asking you, my friends, is there anybody who would like to come in? You're welcome. Hi, I'm Bernard. Hello, Maria. Hi. <laughs> yeah, my question is um, related, very much related to what you were discussing. And more than a question is kind of, I feel I'm, I'm looking for reassurance from you <laughs> today. Sure, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> because I have some very beautiful experiences in the last uh, probably 10 days. And there is always the fear of, uh, it's too good to be true. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> too good to be true. <laughs> but it won't last, it won't last. You know? Yeah. Basically, what I felt through the process, a lot happening during the meditation that is as if a layer of anxiety has dissolved right now. And so I found myself, the way I could feel it was situations that would normally get me anxious didn't. Yes. Or situations in which I I got judgmental about other people or about myself, which I always feel is connected to fear. It didn't happen. Yeah. So it was like that peace experiencing exquisite peace in certain moments. Um, and one of them is very, very significant because I've been teaching for 26 years, basically. And one area where there is always anxiety is with being prepared for the following week yeah. having the lessons ready that is a teacher's thing <laughs> yeah yeah when you have to teach a subject and this week it was just it was blissful it was no worry <laughs> yeah no worry <laughs> And I used to get very anxious about being ready for the following month. I mean, it wasn't just the following week, you know, it was. A, and this time is like I'm managing really well with the weekly rhythm, basically with working with, with one week ahead. So that was an experience to already feel that. And then I also yesterday I came across a friend sent me a video by Michael Singer. Have you heard about him? No. He talks about the untethered soul. Uh -huh. And I feel it's very much the, the same thing that you, you discuss. Um, so he was talking about the place of work, how to bring, that you don't need to look for a, spirit, a work spiritual, that you do spiritual work wherever you are, doing wherever you are. And so... It was like listening to him. It was like, yeah, so obvious. Surrender to the moment, be in the present moment, work to the best of your ability to with whatever life brings to you, whether it's at work, family, friends, whatever. And again, it was so blissful to hear that and, and to feel that inside. It was like, yeah. What for do I need to break my head with, I want this, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Which is what ex spoils the, the, the moment always is, I want something that's not here, or I don't want this thing that is here. Yeah. So I don't, don't know is if you could comment on that, because I, I feel these days I felt that the, the obstacle that comes up is like, Gosh, this is not going to last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or this is too, it's, it's good. Is it real? Is it real? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Of course, the anxiety about maybe it's not lasting is the best invitation to make it go away. <laughs> so then address first 
that obstacle when that anxiety comes, that uh, that fear comes, but maybe it's not lasting. <clears throat> Let's just say, okay, it's right now like this, and then there comes a period where it's not more so easy to connect with that peace that you are experiencing. Then, so what? Then you go about your job again to come back as good as you can, and then it will happen all by itself again. That uh, a period comes, maybe more profound, maybe longer, where it is easy. The, the fear is also, uh, I could make a mistake and then it goes away. I could mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, the, uh, the mistake is to, to have that to entertain that fear. <laughs> if you can have that broad heartedness to think, okay, if it has to be so, that it's getting again more difficult at times, then so be it, and I will deal with it at the time. But for the time being, connect with that which is there as good as you can. An experience is an experience. That means it comes, it has a duration, it goes. But the experiences like this that you describe, they, they let you have a glimpse of something that is there. It is actually not an experience because it's there all the time. It's not coming, it's there for some time, it's going. But then it feels like an experience when it's getting easier and then it goes again because the old habits take over. So deal mainly with that fear of losing it, not trying to find strategies uh, that uh, you would not lose it. <laughs> if it's not the time that it can stay, you can do whatever you like, but all this mm -hmm. being anxious about losing that peace that you have now uh, is the best way of inviting that it leaves. Mm -hmm. it, of course, when it's easier, and then after that, that goes, then it's not so pleasant an experience to find yourself again more in tension. But if it has to happen, then it will happen. If maybe you did some thing that really destroyed it, then you are also aware, ah, ah, this was totally wrong. And you are wiser for that experience too, and will be more careful about. But uh, we don't have to be here and have fear. Ah, oh, maybe uh, now I must be very, very careful not to make a mistake. It's very fragile. Otherwise, I'm destroying it again. Be relaxed and natural. With the openness that maybe after some time it may again be more difficult. So, so what? Then I accept that and deal with it. And then that also will pass again. Mm -hmm. See, as you are speaking, I realized that there is a belief that is running part of the show, is the belief that there is no complete happiness. I heard that many times when I was a child. Mm -hmm. No hay felicidad completa in Spanish. Yeah. So that itself, I feel, is, is part of the, the block. Mm -hmm. And then when you feel happy, then you think, ooh, 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 uh, uh, can't be. <laughs> there, must, <laughs> there must be a snake somewhere. <laughs> Where it's going to come from. <laughs> yes. yes, where it's going to go wrong. That's another one. It's, it's like looking around like something at some point will go wrong. Yeah. Right. There is a natural joyousness, a peaceful joyousness which is part of your nature, which is not created, which need not be attained. It's always there. 
And if you are quiet, if you are at peace, it comes up, it bubbles up to the surface and we become more aware of it. In a way that saying is right, because <clears throat> the experience of that can become more and more and more and more intense. So it's, it's never now this is the absolute peak. But it should not instill the fear. Oh, okay, now I'm too happy. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's not, maybe that's not good. <laughs> that is really a concept. The ninety, even if it's hooked in the system since childhood, when you see that, that then have a good look at it and relax it as good as you can. It's it's there that it's somehow handicapping you yeah yeah because it's looking always for the something missing yeah, well, yeah you know it's like watch for what is missing <laughs> but you know i remember uh, i was struggling struggling all the time and then when i started to feel really at ease at peace there in the beginning often these kind of doubts also came but uh, hey, wait a minute, I, I cannot simply be happy now. <laughs> then, and then I see the, all the people who are not happy. How can I just be happy? And, and this is too easy. Um, there must be more to it. So don't get fooled by that happiness. And so we can, with this kind of thoughts, handicap to live in happiness. We don't have to. Yeah. Sit. Hello. Oh. Yeah, uh, just the mic went on for a moment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we don't have to sabotage our happiness, but if we have a happy moment, it's good to keep the alertness, but not in the sense that no, no, I should not be happy like this, simply uh, uh, shamelessly happy. <laughs> <laughs> By all means, let the joyousness of existence manifest, but then you can have that alertness. Actually, it's not dependent on the circumstances. It comes out of myself. And the more we become aware, the less uh, the, this kind of old ingrained handicaps have any power. Then you start to more and more full heartedly embrace to be happy to be joyous to go joyously from moment to moment and if for some uh, for some reason you lose it again then never mind you come back to your job of bringing the attention back and learning to relax and let go of whatever disturbs it and then the whole process is interesting and not a painful burden that we are bearing Hmm. it's very powerful this i'm just feeling now the power of that belief you know that the, hmm. there is no complete happiness like how the emotional charge that is in hmm. that that has like takes hold of um yeah yeah so it's good that uh, you are aware of it let the thought come when it comes and uh, and then don't try to control it. Say, no, 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 it's nonsense. Okay, let the thought come and let the emotions and the energy come up to the conscious experience that is connected to these words. And then you see they are just creating tensions. They themselves somehow limit your experience. And when you can see that, then you can detach from that and even if it's old, very early ingrained patterns, even if they are strong, if we deal with them, maybe repeatedly, maybe over a time, again and again, then they lose their power and finally they are gone. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. You have the right to be happy. <laughs> don't get lazy in the happiness keep the alertness <laughs> and then that happiness increases all the time but 
yes, the mind comes quickly, but it's too simple. Somehow, uh, yeah. you said in the beginning, I think, uh, wonder, is it real? Yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, your experience right now is real. It may not be an ultimate experience, so, so what? But as an experience, it's real now. And you are totally entitled to feel happy, to feel joyous, to be at ease, not to worry all the time unnecessarily. <laughs> you have the right for all of this. <laughs> it's the birthright of everybody. But it, we are so conditioned that we nearly have a bad conscience when it's there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I cannot simply be happy. <laughs> right. And then I don't we can remember let go. ever. Sorry. I don't and, remember ever receiving that kind of message in, ever in childhood. You right. have the right, you have the, you've been born to be happy, that kind of thing. I mean, I know it's, humanity hasn't received that message. Most people don't receive that message. Yeah. Um, in the early days. So. Right. Even the Buddha says in his first of the four basic truths, life is suffering. <laughs> but then he goes ahead and explains why is it suffering, and then he says it need not be like this. It's just like this because uh, it's a habit and most of the people function like that. And we have all the right and we have the potential to break out of that. Thank you so much, Werner. Highly, highly appreciated. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Wish you well. Thank you. Hariom. 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 Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. As I said in the beginning, you all are, everybody is, essentially and potentially divine. And an aspect of the divine nature is pure joyousness. The traditions talk about attaining eternal bliss. And often that gives a bit of misconception that one is in a perpetual ecstasy somehow. It need not that an ecstasy is an experience. Nothing wrong with it. It comes, it has a peak, it goes. It's usually connected to something happening outside the body, inside the body, <laughs> in the mind. that brings about that ecstasy. It comes, it has a peak, it goes. But the joyousness in that experience comes from oneself. It's there, not as a jumping ecstasy, but as a serene, peaceful joyousness. It's not an experience, it's an aspect of our nature. And if we learn to bring the attention back to that, then we become aware that joyousness is always there. And the more we bring the attention back again and again, the more it may happen that the periods will be there where it's simply there effortlessly, then it may go again, and then it may come again. But as we keep on working on all the obstacles, then there is also like an increased energy manifesting. And there is no limit to it. That energy will expand and expand and expand, become stronger and stronger. 
and with that increasing strength of that manifest ex energy in the present moment, in the present experience, then the experience of that peaceful joyousness becomes more and more powerful. And today you may be very calm and very happy, experience an intensive joyousness, but it doesn't drive you in a jumping ecstasy because you're used to it. But if that same intensity may, would have been there maybe 10 years ago, it would have driven you <laughs> in a jumping <laughs> ecstasy for the moment. That joyousness need not be created. It's part of our nature. That happiness is always there, and we have the full right to experience it. It's not that somehow in order to be compassionate with all the people who suffer, we also have to suffer. We just bring more suffering in the world. Actually, it's the greatest thing that we can do, that we stop that one source of suffering where we really can do something about it. That is our own personal mind that creates conflicts, that creates con uh, tensions, that creates contradictions all the time. That we remove those and let the joyousness flow. And actually, that's the greatest service we do to everybody else. We have the right for it. We don't have to hesitate to be happy, to be joyous. Simply because we have been taught, hey, it's maybe even unethical to be happy when you see others to be unhappy. In the grave situation as it is, but just to be happy, that's not <laughs> ethical. We have to somehow not to be just happy. This is all a nonsensical conditioning that we, when we see it coming up, we can let it go. Totally. It is our birthright to happily live. We have come to this world. We have to endure all the restrictions that come along with an embodiment. But that doesn't mean that we have to be in tension, in pain, that we have to suffer. As long as we are unconscious, as long as we are not being alert, then most of the time we are driven by old patterns that re drive us into suffering. But it's not something that somehow we are obliged to go on and on and on and on with. We have the right. It is our birthright, even embodied in this world, to playfully, joyously go from moment to moment, happily, and to become more and more powerfully aware of the joyousness that is simply there that need not be created. And if out of our old habit, something like a bad conscience sneaks in when we are happy, then we can have a good look at it, laugh at it, <laughs> and let it go again. Okay, my friends. Is there anybody who would like to come in? Hello, Werner. Hello, Dial. <laughs> Happy to see you. Um, I want to share to you a difficult situation what I I have been. Like a few days ago, I come back from 10-day course Vipassana. This yeah. time I was serving yeah. as a translator and manager. 
And usually when I do, I go to the courses, um, I'm very happy that I will serve to the teacher. I will translate and will speak, helping to other students. But this time our connection with teacher was difficult. It was yeah. new teacher, I don't know him, and he kind of don't like me somehow. I was most experienced server and he sometimes teasing me, oh, you most experienced, but you don't know this, but you doing this, this wrong, something like this. And it was really for me first uh, such experience. Usually I had really wonderful connection. Yes, and uh, uh, even day three, I got excuse, some family problems, and I can leave the course. I can use this excuse. And I was thinking, yes, I must go out. <laughs> Too difficult for me. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with the situation. But then uh, I meditate a lot. There's a time for meditation, maybe eight hours during the day. I have to watch students, but still I can meditate. Yeah, and then I stay. This family situation was solving somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and I start, uh, observe my feelings and meditating and get distance from this teacher and just serving the students. Some distance, not completely. Yes, I did translation and some other works, but not as before. I was just come to serve to the teacher. I should do everything immediately, whatever he wants. But now I just do my duty what is possible and meditate. And this helped me to uh, see my difficulties and my ego. Of course, somewhere I'm wrong, I'm not perfect. And somewhere maybe my ego is there. Yes, and it was just new experience for me, how to deal with difficult situation. And of course, meditation uh, helped in dissolving these emotional difficulties, uh, mm. which happening sometimes and new, new experience for me. So yeah. if you can comment yeah. anything, we'll be happy with your support. So <laughs> yes, but uh, what you did in the beginning was resisting against the fact that the teacher has changed and the new teacher is not according to your expectations because with the old teacher you had a very warm and nice relationship and then instead of accepting okay this is the situation first you resisted to the point that you thought you have to run away and then somehow the, that you became able to deal with this situation means that you let go more and more of that resistance accepting that it is as it is and that's not only in a <laughs> Vipassana course, but that's in our whole life lessons all the time. When we have that resistance and think it shouldn't be like this. Why is it like this? It used to be different. <laughs> then everything becomes difficult and we feel always like running away. <laughs> but then if we basically accept, then we can handle the Suddenly we can handle the situation. It may not be totally to our liking, but so what? If we don't put that block all the time, then it's always manageable. Hmm. And that's what you did without maybe consciously thinking I'm resisting and I should stop resisting, but that's what happened. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so I feel that I'm becoming less dependent on the teacher. Because uh -huh. usually I'm uh, expecting the um, help from the teacher, energy from the teacher, the bliss from the teacher. So I see it's possible inside of me. Also new, not uh, really new, but um, uh, the thing which I should learn more and more. Yes, yes. And the teacher's role is to give direction, to help, to support, but still, uh, I mean, it's our own job. <laughs> teacher is not going to do it for us <laughs> and also with the I same 
also with the same teachers. Sometimes you may feel there's a lot of help, a lot of support, and at other times you may not feel that. So uh, we don't have to become junkies for that. We don't have to become dependent. So it's good that you are aware that dependency, dependency is disturbing. It's good to get rid of it. If on top of that still gifts are coming from a teacher, fine, but not in the sense like we are we are desperate and hungrily waiting for a, for a, the next kick that comes from there. <laughs> Yes, yes, I see. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Very helpful. Your You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Rana. Hello, Andreas. The joyousness you're talking about, I think I only experience it when I'm having a good meditation and opening up. But it's very difficult to to get that into my daily life. I mean, you always say like center and relax, but I'm very far away from, I mean, to before some joyousness comes into my meditation, it takes about like 40 minutes like when the, my usual thoughts drop and I mean, they're still there, but I'm not so attached to my personality anymore in some way, I feel. But in my daily life, I never get this kind of joyousness. Any advice? Yes. <laughs> that uh, you may get the more intense joyousness in your meditation than what you get in your daily life, but you cannot say also that there is no joyousness at all in your daily life. You may have moments where you feel happy, where you feel joyous, then you have moments when it's less happy. And then maybe a lot of time it's sort of neutral, <laughs> not not too bad, not too good, <laughs> not too much joyousness. But that joyousness that you for in, as glimpses in happy moments in your daily life experience is the same joyousness. It's just uh, not so steady like what you are experiencing sometimes in your meditation. But it's still coming out of yourself that the situation has somehow made it possible that you let go enough that some of the joyousness can come to the surface. Don't feel bad that you cannot experience the same steady joyousness that you can sometimes feel in the meditation. Don't look too much to, to get that. It's there. What we have to do is exactly, yes, <laughs> learn to let go, learn to relax. And even if you feel it's not bringing that much fruit doing so, it's still doing something. Even if it's not immediately changing profoundly the situation, if you consciously center, breathe and relax, it is doing something and it's preparing the ground that that which prevents it slowly, slowly is being chipped away and eventually it goes. The joyous moments I have in my daily life, I feel I'm more connected to the things that are coming my way or I get, yeah, or well, it's like sense pleasure or yeah, some kind mm -hmm. of achievements that make me kind of proud or like, yeah. like ego based happiness whereas the meditation happiness is more like uh it feels more like going in the direction that you talk about yes is, is there a difference or is it yeah the difference is in our mind the joyousness that you are experiencing in 
the meditation, it's easier to, to be aware. It's not dependent on the situation or something. And then uh, in our joyous moments in our daily life, we connect that joyousness always with a certain situation. Like, yes, it can be a mental situation, feeling proud of oneself, or it can be an external situation. It can be a sense perception, a sense pleasure. But actually what is happening in those moments, those moments we stop for some, for a moment, for some time. We stop creating tensions because we are happy with the situation, because we don't have that resistance and think it should be different. And in that not resisting, in that not resistance, there is, without thinking that we are doing so, there is a relaxation, there is a letting go. And that natural joyousness comes to the surface. And then after that in the mind, we attribute that joyousness to the circumstances because I ate something nice, because I <laughs> listened to good music, because uh, I did something nice and felt good about it. Those circumstances, they just put the field uh, in such a way that it was appealing to us that we were not resisting and in that non-resistance that happiness came but it didn't come from the situation it didn't come from the good food or the music or the the achievement it came out of yourself because you were not resisting against the fact of the experience so the, essentially the joyousness is the same but then we create another story around it in our mind. <laughs> um, so should I go and search for pleasant experience? No, because if you go and search for that and think that you are finding joy, then most of the time it doesn't work and then you are disappointed instead of getting joyous. <laughs> Accept the joyous moments as they come but then also let them go as they go. That is the other thing. When it's a joyous moment, then we try to hold it and then it also doesn't stay. <laughs> no, no, uh, that's what everybody does. Trying to get more kicks, bigger kicks, running, running their whole life long to somehow find happiness exactly in this way. And it works uh, just moments, these peaks of experience, and then the, the, it comes down again, and then people just somehow survive till the next <laughs> till the next peak. As long as we running after that, then we be, we strengthen that belief. My joyousness is dependent on those moments, and it is not. But in those moments, it's still that same joyousness that comes out of you, bubbling out of you. <laughs> so if, if I get that right, I can have even the, the crucial point is the resistance. Yes. And so even if I have like negative experience, feeling kind of down in the morning, physically, the most, I mean, I, if I drop the resistance, I might still it might change a lot. Yes, definitely. Because <laughs> that joyousness is there. It's not ever really absent. It's just that we are putting all kinds of layers on top that we are not capable of consciously experiencing it. And the main, the main block is resisting to the fact of what we are experiencing. And if that resistance gone, goes, then we are more and more capable to, in spite of an unpleasant situation, in spite of an unpleasant experience, be aware that underneath there's something joyous there and you can feel happy in the weirdest situations. <laughs> I have to train for that. <laughs> sure, by all means, <laughs> go on with your meditation. It's helpful and inspiring if you can experience that. It's, it's not 
the end goal of your meditation that you can have a happy experience in your meditation. But it's encouraging. It's showing you that you are going in the good direction. And then learn to be alert in the daily life not to create always that resistance against the fact of the experience. Resisting against fact is a misery. <laughs> and we're creating that misery all the time. The misery is not because the situation is such and such, but because we resist that the situation is in such a way that I don't like it and I don't want it, it should be different. <laughs> So could you say like, have, if you would be able to have no resistance at all, that would mean enlightenment? If you want to call it, I'm very careful with that word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Buddhist term. I mean, it's a... It's a, a very Buddhism popular term. term. Popular term also. Enlightenment, enlightenment. You are in your true nature enlightened. <laughs> and... <clears throat> You may have glimpses of that. And sometimes it comes, it goes. And then eventually something basic may be there. But then if people have experiences and jump to the conclusion, this is enlightened, then already they're limiting themselves a bit. So don't too much uh, look for that enlightenment. Just learn to be yourself. Learn to be natural. And then the experience of that will expand. And it may be that at a certain point, it's really rotating into a new perspective because something that used to flicker, come and go, suddenly is there. And from there, it's like a new platform. And joyously, the experience will still unfold. <laughs> and, and so what's the goal of meditation? Because you said that... Yeah. Yes. Meditation yeah. makes you more self-aware. It gives insight. It helps you to become aware how we are disturbing that naturalness. And in that meditation, we can learn to let that go easier. Because when we are busy, our attention is so absorbed in all the things that we are doing that we most of the time are not aware what's going on psychologically, energetically. But in meditation, when we try to do nothing, then all that stuff comes up. <laughs> and we learn to let go of it more consciously. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Adio. Adio. <laughs> It is the thing. When we see the traditional teachings, then we have that concept of enlightenment as a goal, as something that is far away, that we have to achieve, that we have to work for. And it's like the end of a road, of a long journey. It's inspiring to get us going. Having that conviction coming from teachers whom we trust that they are in another state, they say, uh, if you work, you get enlightened. You find that sense of fullness, of happiness. It's good to get going. But then eventually we can let go of that idea of reaching a goal somewhere and become aware. What we are looking for is here, is now. It's timeless. We don't have to achieve that enlightenment. Enlightenment is our true nature. It's here, it's now. And then if we give up that concept of enlightenment, we are also not more so prone to get it a 
get a bit misdirected because I see it's enlightenment now is uh, something that you can get quite cheap on the market. <laughs> People get to a satsang and feel something special and then they are being told, yes, yeah, that's it. And they come out and with that idea, now I know enlightenment, I'm enlightened. But their whole mental stuff is still there and creating problems. So <laughs> it's a good concept to get us going, to inspire us, but then it's also good to let go of it and just learn to be natural. And learn to be alert. And do our job. And what is our job? To see when we are disturbing it. To learn to let go of that. Not to strengthen the, the mechanism that entertains all these tensions. When we let go of it, then it may come up in glimpses. And then we don't have to put a label on it. This is this, this is that. And these glimpses, they can inspire us to continue. That, uh, yes, it's worth the trouble. But meditation, sadhana, or spiritual practice is not to achieve enlightenment. <laughs> Even if we think so in the beginning, I start to meditate and if I'm doing an off work and other spiritual practices, then eventually the, the fruit of it, the result of it is enlightenment. And enlightenment is not the result of anything, of any spiritual practice. Enlightenment is your true nature. <laughs> it's here, it's now. All our spiritual work is not to achieve something, to gain something, even if in the mind it looks like this. The spiritual work is to become more conscious of what's going on, of what we are doing, how we are preventing that inherent divinity to be experienced, to express itself to shine into that time-space continuum. <laughs> and it's a, it's a process. Gradually, it's getting easier and easier. And then it's still possible. Suddenly something may happen that that experience comes so profound that it never goes completely. But still, the intensity, then there will one could say, okay, to call that enlightenment. But then if that in the mind still is hanging on, one is still hanging on to that, then one can develop the so-called enlightened ego. Now I'm enlightened <laughs> amongst all the unenlightened. And, and there we go again into a new trip. Even if it's a more pleasant trip than before, it's still a notion. So let's get rid of that very concept and just become natural. And if we, if we naturally rotate into a new state, then we can be very happy that this is a fact, but we can keep that openness that wherever we are, there is still infinity beyond it. And the intensity of that experience of truth, of reality, can continue to unfold, intensify. There's no limit to it. That's why I'm always hesitating with that word, enlightenment, <laughs> because there is so much palace to it, so much concepts to it. Just become natural. And then the experience is unfolding all by itself. And all the practices, they are there to help us. There are many practices that energize, energize, energize that psychophysical manifestation. And that helps a lot. Helps what? 
to see what we are doing. And if you are more energetic, then it's easier to let go of things than when we are feeling depleted. And then even if we see the patterns that disturb, it's more difficult to let them go. So the energy that we are gaining from spiritual practice is very helpful, not because we have to uh, develop more and more and more energy to achieve finally enlightenment. The increased energy makes it easier to relax. And in that relaxation, see what's going on. And then seeing what's going on, learn to let go of the hooks, straightening the hooks of the stories that's still sticking to our manifestation, to our mind, to our psychophysical experience. But the true nature, the essence, is always enlightened. It's not something that we have to achieve through spir spiritual practice. The spiritual, spiritual practice is to remove the obstacles of being aware of our naturalness. Is there anybody else who would like to come in and say something? You're welcome. Hello. Hello, Leora. <clears throat> it's been uh, very interesting. <clears throat> um, so I want to maybe describe a little bit how I experience happiness. I mean, it, happiness for me today is not what I thought happiness was. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, also in a way, even uh, joyousness. Uh, sometimes I find myself talking about something serious or not so serious, but I find I have, a, a, um, I notice that I have a slight smile on my face when I talk about it. Um. It's not joyousness, it's, um, of course, sometimes it's, it's a serious matter. But I think it's um, some, somehow issues become less heavy, yes. even though they are heavy. <laughs> so it's like living in two, um, how do you call this? I forgot, tracks. <laughs> Because there is there is uh, life experience and there is something that knows that this is like a serious matter or this is like a serious situation or whatever. So if I go back to happiness, it, happiness it's not what in a way they tell us it is. I mean in courses and I mean or. I don't blame somebody who tells me what happiness is. Don't misunderstand, but it's maybe the understanding of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Happiness is not like walking around all the time and just like, yeah, being happy. <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. that. And for me, I've been listening today very carefully to what people have shared. And for me, it's a lot. It's a, I became more and more self-confidence and um not being afraid of being mistakes because in a way there are no mistakes unless somebody is really really uh, um, I really like damage really damage some somebody or something or like really created. Um, a tragedy, which, which in a way also I can say that there are tragedies. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedies happen. Mm -hmm. They don't always have a, a bad end. They can turn into 
we can go through and maybe there is healing. Um, but, so, and I don't even know the purpose of tragedies or difficulties in life. Sometimes I hear, I mean, maybe I even believe sometimes that it's for the bet, it's it's uh, for for learning and uh, it will be better. So even thinking about life as better and worse or it's thinking about events, I wish this doesn't happen. Mm. It's less and less such thoughts for me. Um, because in a way I don't have control. I mean, I definitely don't have control. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but but of course I have control about um, um, how I take things and how I behave and how, how I'm not sure about how I behave but how I deal with what comes and recently as as you know it has been very tough and it's a it's been a great lesson. And actually it's been like that for me since the COVID started because it, it was a still a big um, crisis in uh, my trust in trusting. Yeah. Um, yesterday my niece called me. We haven't spoken, I mean, we haven't been in touch for many years. She's had very complicated life. Mm. And she has been very, very sick. And she, she wrote to me a mes message and she asked me if, I, we, if we could speak, but actually she said she couldn't speak. She couldn't talk because she, has, she had cancer in her throat and the whole story. Mm. So I, I, I had to think of, I had to really think deep into that. And I realized that I have to tell her that I can't help her unless I really know what's what she's going through because what I went through when I was sick with cancer has nothing to do with what she's been through, really. Yeah, yeah. And this is the reason she said I wanted to speak to somebody who's been through what I what I'm being through. And then I had to be really, really honest with her and tell her, um, I I will not be able to do it unless I hear from you what, what's going on with you. I mean, what you feel, what you've been through a little bit and so. And she wrote, oh my God, thank you so much. I actually I, I didn't write it to her. I spoke to her on the a message on the, yeah, yeah. because I preferred that she hears my voice when I say it rather than writing. I thought if she hears my voice, it would be more somehow warm and yeah, personal. So yeah, so, so she called and we spoke yesterday. So somehow it's like, you know, doing the right thing. And I felt I did the right thing when I told her, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I'm not, a, I'm only a human being and I need to know. <laughs> I can't just stay, I can't just say things, you know. So again, I go back to self-confidence and making mistakes because this could have been a mis mistake, of course. And anything can be a mistake, anything we do. But as, so you, think about as you yourself have said before, nothing is a mistake. <laughs> because said, you learn. <laughs> not only that, because not only because you learn, because life is not about making mistakes or not making mistakes. It's like we go through, we live, I mean, we we, we live, we live life and we go on. That's what I feel recently. And we do what we do. We don't do what we don't do. Uh, I don't know. What, we... I don't know what a mistake is actually. Right. But I, I just want to say one more thing about happiness, about 
how I experience happiness recently is completely different from what I would have expected. Yeah. Right. right. That's what I wanted to say. Shall we go back to what you started with? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And you said uh, it's not like sometimes you're talking about something and it's a serious matter and still you feel there is a lightness there that you didn't feel previous in such situation. But then you said it's not joyousness because uh, it's not a joyous <laughs> event. But still, the very fact that you are more relaxed and detached is that the deep down you are aware there is a joyousness of existence that allows you to have a smile on your face, even if you talk about serious matters. So happiness doesn't mean that we are always loving and having a good time. And if we are with people that are suffering, sometimes we may cry with them. But still, that joyousness is there if we don't prevent it. And that's the happiness I'm talking about. And uh, the superficial experience changes with the flow of life. <laughs> it's not that happiness eventually uh, means that we have only happy situations and pleasant situations <laughs> and no more mm -hmm. negative confrontations, but that we learn to be aware no matter what is happening. That underlying joyousness is not touched, is not affected by it. And the more you are, uh, you are right, the more you are capable of touching that, the more self-confidence comes that you are also not all the time questioning after doing something, was it right, was it wrong, was it a mistake? Uh, it, it happened, it came natural, it came spontaneous with the best intention and that's enough. Uh, then we don't have to wonder, was it right or was it a mistake? I'm not calling things mistakes, except if we willfully do something which we have been repeating and we know perfectly well that uh, if I'm repeating that I'm hurting, I'm hurting myself, I'm hurting others, and I know it and I still repeat it, okay, that I call a mistake. But all the other so-called mistakes, even if about certain things that we are doing, certain reactions that we, after that down the road, we think it wasn't uh, necessarily the best reaction, so what? You didn't do it with any negative intention and then from reacting in such a way from doing the certain things you learn and that gives you the wealth and the experience that in future in similar situations you may not repeat it and then it was not a, a mistake then it was something that brought you the wisdom the increased wisdom after all if we look back in our life most the lessons that we learned that really stayed with us have somehow to do with some mistakes that we made, so-called mistakes, that somehow we have acted in a way that mm -hmm. I learned, hey, wait a minute, I could do that better. I don't need to do that. And then it was not a mistake. I'm calling it only a mistake if I'm consciously doing something mm -hmm. again, knowing I'm creating suffering for myself or for others, and I'm still doing it. That's a mistake. <laughs> as long as yeah. your intention is fine, uh, then you, your actions are sometimes more lucky and sometimes maybe less lucky, but they are not mistakes. <laughs> Also, when it comes to an interaction with another person, mm -hmm. sometimes when I have the best intention, I make a cake and I bring or whatever, but it's not the type of cake that they like. <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I'm serious, right. you know. I mean, it's, 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 it's an easy example to things that we do to yes. make somebody else happy. Yeah. Or they have just, you know, gone on diet without sugar or whatever. So it's, um, 
um, I used to become very upset when things like that happened. Yeah. But we never know when we, when somebody, when when we have an interaction with somebody and we talk together, and then I say something that I think is really, I mean, I would like somebody to say something like that to me. Yeah. It would make me happy, but it didn't make the other person happy. I mean, yeah. I don't. We don't know. We don't know. So it's like there is always this um, part that just doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's it makes things in, easier to also again to take decisions, and uh, it's like you know we do what we do. It's like yeah. It's still what you're describing. It's still the me me calculating mind that uh, I yeah. what can I do to make the other person happy, but. Uh, unspoken the idea is there if i make the other person happy that makes me happy because i'm happy if they are happy with me <laughs> right right yeah right. right right be yourself innocent and natural and it makes many times people happy and sometimes people don't like it so what then it's not you who have hurt them willfully but somehow it has to do with their own conditioning with their own expectations and they are not happy because their expectations were not fulfilled so, we so don't how would you describe yeah yeah we don't have how to would you <laughs> okay i'll talk <laughs> we no, don't have to question. keep that 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 idea i have to make other people happy just be happy and be with other people and that happiness flows over <laughs> okay Okay. Now, yeah, so I, 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 this is something I have to look into. What would, what would be the inner um, weather or whatever when, um, when I do something and I think about some people that will be involved in what I'm doing, but without the me, me, me in there, it's an interesting uh, mm. subject to look into or a challenge to look into. Um, I mean, so, I'm not saying you should do now the opposite. Uh, no. If you know, I can do this and that makes the other happy and you happily do it, then do it by all means. But. Uh, yeah, you don't have fine. to wreck your brain and think what could I do uh, that I'm not making a mistake. I want to make them happy. And there, this is all called calculating that I want the maximum of happiness of the other because of the feedback that I'm getting. Yeah, this is familiar to me. This kind of uh, way of... Uh... Behaving is familiar to me. Thank you. It's it's uh, you've described it. Yeah, this is very familiar to me recently. Then I just quiet down, just relax, quiet down. Quiet down. Nobody relax. expects. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be happy, and then actually, yeah. just you're connecting. If you are happy in yourself and just connecting with yeah. other people, often lightens them more and makes them happier. Cake or no cake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, okay. Thank and you, if, Werner. And if yeah. spontaneously you feel like baking a cake and doing things, then do them. Fine. But not with calculating, uh, is it right? Uh, can I make them happy? But just it feels right. And then you do it. And sometimes we may make blunders in spite of that, and never mind. <laughs> so what? <laughs> yeah, this is leaves a whole life field uh, that is so familiar for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it leaves this space that I have to get now familiar with. It leaves me with this space that I have now to get familiar with. It I has... mean, it's it is familiar to me a little bit because I I guess I have been somehow on this now on this path as you described, right, but it's sure. like, 
It's interesting to hear how you're describing it, yeah. Sure, you have been uh, working in that direction now since quite a while. Uh, it has to do with not more taking it so serious what others think about ourselves, our persons. That doesn't mean to create a block and oh, I don't care about that, but simply not be, be not caring all the time uh, what they think about it, but rather make peace with ourselves. And then we are not bringing anything bad, anything destructive to them. If they still don't like it, then that's uh, their problem. Too bad. Yeah, too, <laughs> too bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then we leave. Thank you like so that. much. You're yeah, that's, yeah, thank you. Are you? Are you? All right, my friends. I think that's enough for one time. Let's stop the satsang for today with this. Hariyom, Hariyom, Hariyom.